Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the CryptoMat node. So we're going to be covering the new support for the uh, native CryptoMat workflow within uh, DaVinci Resolve Fusion 20. Out of all the new nodes that came out, this is probably one of the most exciting for me when it comes to uh, compositing, because this gets us closer to Fusion instead of using uh, things like Nuke and different compositing software. This gets us closer to using only Fusion for all this stuff, which is great. But before we uh, jump into Fusion and start talking about this new CryptoMat node, we're going to jump into Blender and I'm just gonna show you a few things because in order to have cryptomats, you need to make sure you're rendering cryptomats. And I use Redshift as my renderer, and it's fairly simple. For Redshift to export cryptomats, all I have to do is one, make sure all my uh, objects are named. So if I select, say, this statue, I go to the object. You can see I have this Redshift area right here that just allows me to add an object ID or crypto ID if I want. And then in my files, all I have to do is make sure I am selecting Cryptomat as one of my uh, export layers. And then I can obviously uh, select what type. And Fusion accepts object IDs for your uh, Cryptomat types. So I'm just going to make sure I export object ID. Now, if you're using uh, Eevee or Cycles as your render engine and not Redshift for Blender, I'm not exactly sure. I've never used a CryptoMat function with either of those because I normally use Houdini for all my 3D stuff and Houdini natively allows you to export. Plus I use Redshift within Houdini to export my CryptoMat. So I've never really played with the uh, CryptoMat settings within uh, Eevee or Cycles. So if you're not sure how to do that, I'm sure if you search for tutorials, it'll let you know how to do that. Like I said, I've never done it with those. So we're gonna jump back into Fusion. And on our Fusion, we're going to go ahead and import our media. So I'm going to select Loader. And I'm just going to use the uh, scene we've been using for the last few days doing the uh, deep pixel, no breakdowns. So we've got our little uh, EXR here. And if I want to do something like change the sky, it's fairly simple, especially if I brought in multiple layers, I could just switch my sky off, but we can also use CryptoMats for all this stuff now. So if I add another loader and bring in my CryptoMat render right here, after this, I'm going to add a CryptoMat node. And what this node allows you to do is it allows you to select specific object IDs for mats. So if I come over here, we have our view layer and right here, use object IDs. And we have multiple view modes from color to edges, our beauty and our mat. And right now we have nothing selected, so we're not going to see mat. Additionally, we have this output to alpha. And this is only needed if we use the colors mode. And I'll show you that here in a second. But the way this works is we pick or select a mat that we want to use. So if I wanted to pick all these angel statues right here, I could either select the pick button and select which object ID it is. If I knew, I believe it's a two. I was wrong, <laughs> but we can also select this picker right here and I can click on what mats I want to select. So if I want all those angel statues, I'm good. If I also want all these little urns, I can select these urns and that'll add it. I want these trees that'll add it. If I need to remove it, I can either hit this garbage right here or I can select this minus picker and remove the ones I don't want. So now only these angels are selected as a map. But if I look and if I go up here and I look at our alpha, we don't have any. So for under the colors, if I select output to alpha, now we've got an alpha. But if I go to any of my other view modes, either edges or beauty or a mat, it's going to output a mat, whether this is checked or not. So let's go back to colors, switch that back on. Now also, if I select my mat layer, it's automatically going to show you just those white mats to see what is and isn't a uh, alpha. And down here, this just lists your selected mat. So as I add them, go back to our uh, 
beauty is going to add our mats right here. And as I said, we can remove them with the uh, garbage or I can select clear all. Let's go ahead and add these back in. And if I just want to clear the selected layer, whatever layer I was selected on will clear. So let's add that back up. And under the mat layers, it's just uh, showing which selected our view or showing all of our mat layers. Now, the one thing about this node, which I wish it had, is ability to invert your mats. So if we look at our mat, there's no way on this node itself to invert my mats. So in order to invert your match, you're going to have to do it on the merge level. So let's say we want to change this sky. So let's go ahead and add a merge node. Let's bring in a nice new sky. And what size that's uh, too small. So I'm going to add a re size node to resize our sky. I'm going to bring this into our background. I'm going to bring this into our foreground. If we look, nothing has changed. But if I go to our crypto mat, I can go to the pick and I can select everything except for this background, which is the empty background. And everything is selected. So now if we go to our merge and I input our uh, little input, you can see we just removed that uh, background and now our new sky is in there. So if I play, we can see our nice new sky going across. Amazing. So we can use multiple cryptomat nodes to add different stuff. So if we wanted to uh, say add some smoke in here, let's go ahead and add some smoke coming out of our urn. And uh, let me pick a smoke. Use this one, and I'm going to add a uh, Lumicure. Let's add a merge node. Bring this into our background. Our smoke into our foreground. And let's go ahead and move our smoke. And let's add a uh, transform node. Let's resize that. And let's bring that to this back urn right here. So now we've got some smoke rising from our little urn, but it is uh, still too large. So let's make that smaller. So there you go. But as you see, it's going in front of our statue and our urn is behind our statue. So we need to cut that stuff off. So we can copy our cryptomat node. Let's go ahead and bring that in. And on our cryptomat node, let's clear all and then let's just select this statue. So if we select that statue, it's going to select all because they're all on the same ID. But if I take this crypto mat and put it into our merge and go to our merge, I can apply my mask inverted. So now it's, it's behind our little statue there. And if you notice, some of our smoke is going over this statue. So all we would have to do is go back to our crypto mat, select that, select this statue. Now it's part of the alpha. We don't have to worry about that coming in. So then we can add a, another smoke on this urn. So let's grab a new one. And let's just copy all these. Let's get a new merge. Copy our crypto mat and we'll bring that into this merge. And yeah, I know it's messy. <laughs> We'd normally clean this up. And actually, let's go ahead and move our smoke before uh, we add that crypto mat. So now we've got our smoke in our location, but as you see, 
this tree should be in front of our smoke. So if we go to our crypto mat, we can clear all this and then we can uh, select our little tree there. So now that is our mat. We can input it into our merge and our smoke is only on our tree. So if I go to our merge settings, apply mask inverted. Now we've got that smoke behind our tree. So that is the new crypto mat node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.